So hello, uh, my name is Zbyszek, uh, and yes, I work at Red Hat. I work on uh, System D and Fedora, and this is a talk. Uh, well, more more about an idea than a specific thing. Uh, for me, this specific thing means um, a specific implementation using a specific distro, but the the idea is more general. So let's. Uh, Talk, uh, uh, why, why would we want to build uh, interds from distro packages? So, so let's first talk about uh, the current state. So, um, different distros do it in different ways, uh, and the tooling is uh, separate, but the, the ideas are the same. So, basically, we, we take some files from the ho uh, host. Uh, use LDD to, to follow, find the right libraries. We use some magic tricks to figure out other files. Uh, and then this uh, fails all the time, of course. Uh, and it's, well, in this trust we already have packages. And the packages have this nice dependency syntax between them and requirements and recommends and, you know, conflicts and post installation scripts. Uh, and with something like, like Dracut, which is used in Fedora, we kind of kick it to the curb and repeat the whole thing badly. Uh, and we do it in a very inefficient way because we, well, like, you install a bunch of packages and the thing that takes the longest time is running Dracut and figuring out the interd. Uh, well, not, also, well, it is not reliable and it's not efficient. Uh, and then once we have built the interd, uh, uh, we reboot, and then when we reboot, we have this very uh, special uh, environment with uh, special tools. Uh, and uh, I mean, by custom, I mean I mean, mean this as a bad word here. It's like uh, you know, this something that is completely different and magic, and people are think that it's special, even though it's not. Uh, and there's lots of complexity. So in particular. Uh, nowadays, most people use systemd in the interd, uh, but there is uh, the remnants of previous uh, states where systemd wasn't there. So we have an execution queue in systemd, and we have an execution queue in Dracut, and they kind of fight, uh, or at least duplicate. Uh, and this, thing, this complexity means that it's very hard to figure out what is going on when something goes wrong. Uh, and uh, even though the approaches are similar, uh, the implementations are completely different, and uh, we have this nice state where systemd is used, is used everywhere, and we should have the same state for interds where, uh, I mean, there's less duplication. And, um, you know, uh, as a second part of the motivation, uh, the, the number of talks that were given over the last two days would apply, but the keynote, like reproducible and immutable OS images, uh, the actual title was with NixOS, but I don't care about this part. So, uh, I mean, I love NixOS, by the way. Uh, uh, we, have, we have this state where we, um, well, we build images which use UKIs, and the UKIs, uh, UKIs are signed, uh, so we have a single file with a kernel in interd, uh, well, which is signed by the vendor or maybe signed for local distribution, but ideally it is signed by the vendor. Um, I mean, it will be signed locally only for, for development environments like that. In, for the real users, it will be signed by the vendor. So the, uh, the interd must be built by the vendor. And then, uh, uh, it, like, like there's no space for local modification in this scheme, uh, and this whole system that was designed to pick up local tweaks made to to binaries by users and configuration files just uh, doesn't make sense. Uh, so, if we are doing things in this new scheme, that's just it makes sense to build from packages. Um, I mean, the, the other system only makes sense because it's because of history, and I don't think that uh, we should uh, use that. So, uh, the particular implementation that was also mentioned uh, during the last two days is MKSI. Uh, it builds OS images from distro packages. Um, latest versions of MKSI even do this thing where uh, if you start from a systemd repo, 
uh, you do MKSI build, it will build, well, it will download the, for example, the Fedora disk git uh, uh, repository for you, um, uh, build systemd, build an, a package from that, like the real Fedora package, uh, with the Fedora spec file uh, and install that. Um, so it, it takes the idea of doing things from 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 packages to to uh, uh, well um, takes it very far. Uh, and uh, MKSI supports uh, all kinds of distributions and all kinds of installers uh, in a very uniform way. So uh, this goal of unifying the differences between distributions can be can be partially realized by using MKSI. Um, and uh, of course we have this thing where uh, um, MKSI can do pretty much everything fully unprivileged now. It's using systemd part uh, in unprivileged mode, uh, which means that it's really pleasant to, to do things. And it's really pleasant to do those builds in um, uh, containerized environments, so, so for example, for on a sandboxed build server, it's kind of nice to do those things with MKSI. Um, and uh, a lot of work is going into like profiles and match sections, so it's, uh, I mean, getting easier to actually tell MKSI what to do. Um, uh, I added this to, to the slides because there, there were there were a number of talks about uh, um, you know using MKSI in various versions. Uh, in general, uh, for people who haven't been here last year, Dan Demeyer had two really good talks. Uh, they they're both available online uh, about MKSI and Repart. So I, I'm not going to talk more about them. Um, and. Uh, so, like, what, what they want to get with um, the distro packaging. So, in general, the idea is to take a lot of stuff that we were doing and just stop doing it and have a system that is simpler. Um, right? I mentioned that we have the package uh, um, dependency resolution mechanism that is done very well by packagers and by package managers. Uh, on my laptop, I uh, built uh, initRDs with uh, this MKSI initRD scheme for like last two years and they have never broken. Uh, I just don't touch them and it, it just works. Uh, because we let other tools that are designed to do that do like most of the work. Uh, this this, this uh, typical failure mode where uh, I don't know. Uh, System D gets the DL openified and starts opening some important library using DL open, and so then when you use LDD to list the libraries, you don't see that. Then you build the RD using Jackwood, and it you know, doesn't have the library, right? Uh, this doesn't happen because packagers take care of that and they add the dependencies to the to the package metadata, uh, and we don't pull files from the host, so. Uh, I don't know, it feels really uh, unclean to do that. Uh, and this is, makes things much more reproducible because we have some manifest of packages that we pull in and the outcome is uh, just a direct result of that. Uh, well, I mean, it's an advantage, not, maybe depends how you look at it. We have the same images for everyone. Uh, well, testing is easier, certainly. And uh, if we sign images, then this makes a lot of sense to build them from packages. And uh, finally, like kind of part of the idea is that we discard this, uh, those scripts that, were, that have been added over the years for the interdees, and we don't, uh, uh, we just rely on, on normal packaged binaries. Uh, so that was the plan, and now let's look at some, some details. Uh, so. Uh, like this, the idea, uh, I had a talk about um, doing uh, interdis built with packages three years ago, uh, and the first version was, uh, well, a config file for MKSI that seemed to work, work on my laptop, worked in some VMs, uh, and initially we were very enthusiastic about this, and we wanted you know, to add support for uh, various things that Dragwood supports and that are very important for 
Fedora and Red Hat users. Um, so iSCSI, fiber channel over Ethernet, uh, NFS, this and that. Uh, and this failed uh, badly. And let me just show an example. So we have iSCSI uh, and the iSCSI initiator utils package in Fedora has four binaries. So this is, well, I mean, nice and six service files also, you know, uh, integration with systemd. Uh, and then there's uh, the Dracut hookup. So there's like uh, five, five files five, that um, have a thousand lines of code. And you know, it's not enough just to have bash code. You have bash code, which generates bash code that is then executed and does things. And this is all in addition to the already existing, uh, well, service files and stuff. And then actually you look at the service files and for example, you, I saw this one, um, you know, like, <laughs> run a shell to call a binary to create a config file at runtime in ETC uh, and uh, just, uh, well, I mean, we, tr we tried, we really tried to, to get iSCSI uh, uh, working, it's just it's, life is too short for that. So. <laughs> Uh, either, either, the, I mean, either the maintainers of iSCSI will just get rid of that stuff and uh, provide some something nice and clean that can be used uh, independently of Dracut, or we will not support iSCSI. And um, so, uh, I think I'm fine with either outcome. And. Uh, uh, on my laptop, Dracut has 119 modules uh, that do also all kinds of things, and it like would take forever to to convert them, and uh, it just doesn't 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 seem worth to do it, um, at least not from my side. Uh, so the like the updated plan is to. Uh, concentrate on the simple cases, uh, so like. A normal laptop with uh, without uh, network file systems or RAID will work just fine, uh, or VMs, and work on the infrastructure in the sense of uh, all the tools in systemd, which I'll talk about in a moment, and, and other surrounding um, surrounding uh, tooling, uh, and. Uh, well, to make this happen, we need to uh, make it possible to, to do all those things locally, but then at some point be ready to, to switch uh, to building in centralized infrastructure. Uh, I thought that it would have already happened by now, but uh, well, no, not yet. Uh, so, um, yeah. And now I, I want to mention some, some additional topics. Uh, so, um, uh, we have interDs. And we have exit RDs. And traditionally, uh, the exit RD, so, so the exit RD is uh, an init RD that you switch to back from the host system during shutdown to clean up the uh, root file system. And uh, I mean, the, the concept has existed forever, but um, the name is new. Uh, but the, the approach that was used for this was that uh, the init RD would uh, pack part of itself, put it, put this in somewhere in in, in slash run or some, or somewhere uh, where it would stay in memory during the um, whole uh, time the system was up, and then it shutdown would be unpacked. And this is well, kind of wasteful, but it also is not useful because imagine that we that we boot the machine, we wait a year. Uh, during this time, we update the, the software running on the on the host all the time, and then we switch back to this very ancient version of the exit RD. Uh, so uh, we don't want to do that, uh, and we are moving towards this uh, approach where the exit RD is taken from the host system and injected into the right place so that it is picked up for for shutdown. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, and to make it easier to build exit RDs, we have a systemd shutdown binary, and um, like for example in Fedora, this is packaged as a as a separate uh, package tool to make it easy to build exit RDs. Uh, 
And uh, what, some, what are some next steps that, uh, well, should happen? I hope will happen. Um, so uh, the problem with uh, this centralized building of uh, inter-Ds is that we have, uh, well, we have less flexibility. And uh, system D is adding uh, a lot of tooling. Uh, I'll just like mention it without diving into details. Uh, of course, we can build different variants of interdis, but this this well, takes space and it's not always useful. And we have like four mechanisms of extending the configuration. We have add-ons, so stuff that is loaded by the bootloader and influences the kernel is checked by, by uh, a secure boot. We have sysx and constex, uh, which can also be loaded from the boot, uh, for the bootloader, but they are applied a bit later. They are uh, not checked through secure boot. Um, we have credentials. Uh, so we have like those four different uh, or three different ways to um, influence how the in, um, how the entire thing behaves. So so hopefully we can deal with the problem of not having I mean having a single version of the base in Um and the plan uh, well what was happening. So uh, MKSI in TRD was initially a separate thing, and then got absorbed by MQSI. Um, it is now essentially installed as a, as a little kernel install plugin, so it's easy to build interdis in this way locally if you want to. Um, uh, there has been, uh, uh, I mean, like this is more, more in the, on the systemd side, uh, support for various kinds of signing being added. Um, we have a pull request open for offline signing, so like after the fact signing uh, of Yuki's. Um, uh, we can build system extensions, but it's uh, I mean not always not trivial to do that. It's I think it, we, if we do this at scale, it would be rather painful. Um, there, there were talks about this uh, over the last two days too. Uh, we, we got support for uh, inserting microcode sections in, um, well, in, in UKIS, so this is something that is also useful to, to make it, this actually work. Um, and uh, the, like the, the biggest issue that, that happens is that the, the interdis that are built from packages are larger than they, that they should be. And um, uh, I think this is not a problem just for, for this particular method of building in their DS. It is a general problem because uh, people want to add stuff to the interd all the time. So in particular for newer graphic cards, different versions of firmware will require the, the, the interd to grow anyway. Um, Compose putting EROFS uh, images into the interd was mentioned and, and stuff like that. So we will we, we need a way to uh, deal with bigger, bigger interdis uh, in, in either case. Um, and in general, the, uh, the copying is OK. It's the, the idea that we take the interd, we fully decompress it, and then start using it. Uh, this is what causes this long run. And if we can avoid the decompression, then, um, well, it doesn't really matter how big the interd is. I mean, in the sense that if it's like 200 megabytes or 500 megabytes, copying this on a modern machine is a, a fraction of a second, right? Um, and uh, last week at uh, Plumbers, there were some ideas floated around. And the one that I particularly like is uh, enhancing the kernel to, to have an uncompressed interd with a file system image inside, and then the uh, the kernel would kind of take this 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 one file from the interd and turn it into a block of memory that is used for the file system, and this all happens like with a zero copy, uh, in a zero copy fashion. So um, to wrap things up, uh, like how does the ecosystem look? So we have MKSI, which is used to build. Uh, interds with the MK, uh, MKSI interd idea. Uh, but if you build MKSI images, for example, like the system D test image, you also build interds that you inject, that you use for testing. So 
uh, you know, MKSI interd uses MKSI and MKSI uses MKSI interd, and we have the kernel install plugin for uh, to build interds. We also have a kernel install plugin to call Ukify, um, so, to, so you can build an interd and then build a Ukify, uh, uh, build a UKI locally. Uh, kernel install. Uh, um, to, to install this somewhere, systemd measure to do uh, uh, PCR predictions, p sign as b sign for signing for secure boot, uh, the add-on sysx configs and credentials to uh, do configuration, and uh, systemd stub which will load them and, and need support for for them. Um, I mentioned. Uh, building of sysx and, and here i wanted to mention reproducible builds because if we build sysx then the it's much nicer if we can build the lower layer on demand so if we can do, build it reproducibly um and then we have ukis and multi-profile ukis and uh, uh, well, incremental building of ukis and offline signing so like sp uh, spraying out the, the way that ukis are built um uh, and some ideas how to make the whole thing faster. So uh, the, I mentioned that the, uh, we, we can do the zero copy donation of the of the data, and then we can probably use EROFS that is compressed internally as the uh, payload file system. And uh, if we have uh, signed in either this, uh, then of course it's nice if they are immutable. And uh, this has also happened in system D. Now we like uh, an either D. Uh, no matter how it is built, is now usually read-only at runtime. And well, that, that's all I have. And I some some links, uh, questions. Thank you. <laughs> questions, yes. So, what are your uh, word domination plans for MKOSI NetID? Is a long-term plan that you could replace the other init ID implementation, implementation like DragCat completely, or is it long-term that you will support some users' cases but have DragCat, for example, as fallback to all the corner cases that you don't want to? Touch? Yeah, I think I think that that like this this hybrid uh, coexistence will, will need to exist. Um, so, like in Fedora. We wanted to have signing of SD boot uh, and uh, signing of more things, and it is, this got blocked because of some technical issues. Uh, so, um, and also the building of interdis uh, in like the, this fashion uh, in the federal official federal infrastructure is also blocked because of technical limitations. But I, I really hope that we can um, overcome those things. I mean, there are like similar on the progress of being fixed uh, next week for the last f couple months, but uh, I, I think it will happen when people come back from vacation and uh, then in Fedora we will be able to provide such interdees and then people will start using them for real and I hope that they will be actually signed so we can establish more trust. I've got my questions. Uh, the first issue you've mentioned uh, is that uh, initRDs built from packages uh, are bigger. Maybe uh, the solution would be to have packages, some clues how to use them to, to build initRDs, w which files to put, because the, the idea we use today with Dracut or, or other tools is to pick only important files from, from local systems. So maybe packages should point, if you are building an initRD, then uh, use only the, these three files, not, not, not the rest. So uh, this, um, I mean, like the, the answer to uh, uh, what, what packages uh, should do is to split packages into chunks that make sense um, 
And this, this is actually quite nice also for other users, because if you are building a container from packages, then you have the exact same issue, and if it's split up in a reasonable way, and the, the package doesn't introduce dependencies that it doesn't need to, then other people benefit. Um, and actually, it turns out that there isn't that many files, like in, in packages that are well split, that you don't want to install. Actually, I would say that in most cases, it, it's like uh, minor differences. Uh, there are some particular exceptions, like um, kernel uh, modules. Uh, in, like we, we had this idea in the in the beginning that the kernel modules would be split, like there would be like a you know a kernel init rd modules package or something like that, but this is just infeasible, and uh, MKSI now supports white uh, or uh, allow listing and deny listing of kernel modules to put into uh, the init rd, and this, this seems to be the right approach. Uh, so actually the size differences, they, uh, I mean, they're, I think the packaging is mostly, mostly okay. Yeah. Um, so understanding that you, you you said that there's going to be a coexistence of of both uh, that and drug code um, is I scarcely the only challenge because I remember issues like um, fiber channel etc. They basically suffer from the same issue and within the enterprise community they are still very prevalent. So. Sparing them seems kind of a difficult challenge in terms of uh, um, commercial support. That's point one. Point two, um, what about things that are inherently user-centric? For instance, a lot of people use uh, initRD to early unlock uh, encrypted volumes using SSH. Um, can you support that? Because I haven't really worked with SysX and stuff, but that doesn't really seem like a task well suited. Is that correct? Um, so, uh, well, uh, I mean, I think that if this idea proves to be popular, then somebody at some point will figure out what to do with Fiber Channel. Uh, it's just that it, I mean, I personally, I find it more interesting to work like on the system detooling side and stuff. Um, uh, stuff like uh, very custom things. Um, so this will never be in a, like something that is distributed by the distro, right? Uh, um, this the people build local uh, variants and local extensions, and this doesn't preclude this in any way. Um, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I mean, systemd is adding various options to uh, unlock things, and uh, I know if this approach makes sense in general, then maybe it will be added to systemd upstream, and then it will flow into the package, and then we'll end up in the interd. Uh, but uh, I think that the most interesting answer is that just people have custom extensions to, to interd anyway. We're out of time. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>